It's a pleasure. Uh, you have some advice for us, right? As far as social media goes, people oh, yeah. can ask you, and you want to give them a, a place where they can all just go look at it, so you don't have to keep explaining it. Yeah, Is that correct. You mean my wait? Your social or my social? What are you talking about? Uh, what do you mean? No, but you said you had advice for as far as like social media and stuff like that goes. Yeah, like, yeah, for like, you like guys, for, right? Yeah, like for we're us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're just continuing the conversation you interrupted. Like you, <laughs> yeah. you were like, I don't care about this. Let's start the podcast. Question number one. Yeah. The same fucking question. Because I didn't get to start the podcast yet. But yeah, basically that. Yeah. 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 So no, do you, no, you want to restate the question that you asked and then we can just jump we, back into it? We yeah. can jump back in. I, the question is, it basically boils down to what, what's the best times to want to post? I mean, get some traction. Yeah. Like um, basically we're looking for tips and tricks of like people that are like, especially us and other people with podcasts, comedians, anybody in this kind of industry that needs those tips and like little tricks of like, like you said, when to post, yeah. what kind of stuff to post, any kind of I'll, advice you and have. And I'll even take it item specific on even just with our podcast, even if that's the case too. But, yeah. you know, I mean, just, I mean, anything to just get on higher pages, bigger radars, yep, um, a broader audience. So, How do you do it right, basically? Um, first of all, I f- would feel like a hypocrite and a fraud if I was like telling everyone how to do it right. And hopefully three years from now, I could be like, yeah, I'm the guy to talk to for that. Of but uh, I do have one I will, I will shout out. You know, uh, I produce Watch Girls Watch Porn. Uh, it's on all the porn sites. Uh, it's a combination like talk show and review show. Uh, we're about a year into it. And uh, I would say that it's hard to tell exactly because the views keep going up. It's not, it's kind of like podcasting it's a tough problem to have, right? It is a good, it is a good. <laughs> well, so like on TikTok, for example, like when you post a video, like after that first, like two or three weeks, that's like 95% of the views you're ever going to get for yeah. that video yeah. most of the time. And then YouTube is like a slow, gla- gradual burn with occasional viral. The porn sites are pretty much like whatever month you put it up, like you'll get that traffic that month. You can expect like that traffic. And if it's a good video, plus 5%. Like until like for like seven years, like it's oh, wow. it's it's okay. it's really evergreen. So like our lowest view video right now across like all platforms is probably like ninety thousand views and growing. Yeah, and our best is like three hundred thousand for an episode. So like that's like what little bit of credibility. And then um, I've managed a bunch of social media accounts. Uh, the biggest jump is I took a girl from one hundred and forty thousand on TikTok to one point two million nice. in about five months. So okay. like I have it's about I've, ten times the growth. I have yeah. some chops, yeah, and, and I've yeah. repeated it right. Like I've, I've I've grown a bunch of different accounts a bunch of different ways. So I would say that I'm a competent digital marketer. You know a thing or two about a thing or two. Getting I'm it a going. thing or two about a thing or two. Yeah. Same same way how I feel about comedy. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. I'm not an expert. So I'll I'll do a couple like tips and tricks, I guess. But I think what's more effective and I was explaining this, there's no silver bullet. Like it's not like I could give you guys a blog post and it's like, do these five weird tricks to be, you know, a millionaire. It's it's always usually you need to find your angle. You need to find the thing about you that's compelling or special. So I think what would make sense is to just talk like a couple best practices. And then for us to talk about your show specifically and like get into if there's anything I can help with your show. Yeah. Sounds good. And we already tell everybody our show sucks. So we can talk about that part off the air. <laughs> uh, we tell them up front that our show sucks. And I think that's why some of the people that actually do watch us watch it is because it sucks. They're like, yeah. it's, it's horribly good. I think too, because we we're like, we're honest about it. We're not like, Oh, we're, we're doing these big things. We're like, nah, my mom's one of my listeners, I think. And I, this Shout show gets mom. fucking filthy and she hardly ever brings it up in person, but when she does, I and the, it's the only time Shut I get down embarrassed. Immediately. <laughs> <Cry>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever, well, mom. Well, I, no. I would hope what we're talking about is interesting, you know, not just to like comics that are listening, um, but also like to regular people, because like you were talking about this, right? Uh, Jason said as a non comic, like you had this extra time and you're like, Man, I wish I could like put it into like making something or making right. content. So like let's 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 do some b- first principle, right? So the first principle is like what is something that is interesting about you or something that like you give a shit about, right? And so like what I'll see a lot of comics do, and I don't think you guys have done this with the way the format is for the show, but they'll go, oh, I'm doing comedy. So I'm a comedian and that's interesting. No, that's not interesting. It's not interesting to be a comedian. It's not interesting to be an actor. Like even when I say actor, right? Like, are you on Law and Order? That's a special type of actor. Are you on like the TV show community? Cause completely different actor, totally different. right? So like you have to figure out what are the things you want to put forward because it doesn't take if, if you've properly done it you don't need to have a million subscribers to be successful in the content game like like you need to figure out who your people are and you need to give them content that they want so I, I think it makes so much sense like there's this old adage measure twice cut once and I think that it's 
I would say measure 15 times, iterate 15 times. Don't say, Hey, this is our formula. We're going to stick to it. Like, like what I like to do now in the startup world is ask the person who's going to buy it. Hey, would you buy this thing before I build it? So like get it designed, get it mocked up and be like, Hey, would you hit click on this? We don't even have it. It's just a picture of it. It doesn't exist, but Hey, would you buy this thing? And if they say yes, then we'll go build it. Yeah. I think the same thing with the podcast, right? So like, some ideas that I'll throw out here. Get on uh, AdSense on, on Google AdWords. There's like a million different websites that'll let you do this and look at what trending searches are. What are what are people looking for? So how do you find how do you find AdSense? Like where do you what do you actually Google to get there? Yeah, so you could go on Google and then type up a uh, tool, like literally the word tool, trending, Google. I don't even think you have to include AdSense. And then Google has its own analytics platform, but to get most of those insights, you have to set up a a Google AdSense account. But there's tons of free tools that are out there where you could look up like 100 or 200 keywords, and it'll be literally the front page. They'll all be promoted. Um, All different. I think SEO Rush is one of the good ones that's out there. They'll try to get you to pay after like 50 searches. But, you know, even even then, like you don't, you wouldn't need it for more than a month. So we're talking about like 10 bucks of investment. And so what you can do is go, okay, are people looking for extreme podcasts? are people looking for a comedian podcast? Probably not. But like, what is something like you work at a moving company, right? What's something that you feel comfortable? Like, like pick three things to describe yourself besides the word comedian, uh, guitars, shoes, and, uh, filth. Okay. Three words to describe yourself. Uh, yeah. Video games, cooking and wrestling. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'll take, one thing that you said first to start, right? So the shoe flip game, right? You don't want to be a comedian with a podcast because then you're just the, you know, and I'm, I don't mean this with disrespect at all, right? Yeah. Then you're just the 80,000th fun, or like in terms of, yeah, here's yeah. the funniest, sure. you're the 80,000th funniest comic with a podcast. Or you could be the funniest podcast that talks about shoes. I and see that, what you mean. That yeah. flips it right Find there. like your, your niche or like your, basically your angle Yeah. Uh, for, for lack of a better term. And you're already doing it. You, yeah. you, you said you're already buying the shoes. You're already putting it up, right? You've already got the video aspect to it, right? So like you could have the shoes right here. You could negotiate with your guests. You could have guests on where you like live buy and sell. It's got the Pawn Star thing built into it, right? So you're like, okay, well what? And this is where like I'm saying, remember, don't measure twice, cut once measure 15 times, right? So you're like, uh, again, this gets really specific. Sure, That's why there's not, but let's say yeah, we're yeah. using the shoe example for a second, right? Yeah. Well, I, and I imagine it's not like, same as, or it is kind of the same in comedy where people ask me for advice and I've asked for advice, but there's no blueprint that just says, yes. this is how you do it because everybody's different and everybody's path this is, is just different. a good and example yeah, yeah. and you can take it and evolve. Mean, yeah. yeah, I mean. Well, know. any advice that like Jeff Foxworthy would give probably wouldn't have helped Dave Chappelle's career. Exactly. You know? Like those are the, but they're both wild probably two of the most commercially successful comics of all time, like two of the top 50 for sure. Mm-hmm. So, but their advice would have ruined each other's careers if they'd given it to each other. Yeah. So, it's really about finding, you know, your spin. So, on the the shoe thing, we'll just zero that down and try to build like a case study of like this is how to build a business around it, right? So, one of the things that you could do is say, okay, how am I going to monetize this? And one of the ways that you could do that is by having people submit to you shoes they want to sell. So like they want to sell these shoes. Consignment is like a really popular business model. So like a store that sells something on consignment can put it on eBay or they can just have it in a window. Most stores that are worth their chops are now putting it on eBay or one of the other platforms. Broader audience. There are still some stores, believe it or not, that primarily do their business through foot traffic. So if you have these high-end products, you can give the guys a vanity piece where you go, hey, here's my show. You're going to send me like a $5,000 shoe, right? I know a guy, if you look on my Instagram, is actually a video of me setting up the social media for him. He's got like... The, yeah, the Red Octobers? I mean, he's got everything. But yeah. if you if you, if you you go on my Instagram Stram show, I'm not... I mean, yeah, go yeah. on it. But uh, there's like... I only have like eight pictures. One of them is me in this guy's uh, house. He's got, he's got like a million dollar plus shoe collection. Like nice. just wow. crazy, yeah. nice. crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. Like he's got game worn signed Kobe Bryant shoes. He's got uh, the shoes. Like that. He's got the <laughs> shoes that LeBron James wore in his first All Star game. Like yeah. it, it's an he's insane. Like a super fan, a little bit. On the and shoes. he's a, he's a yeah. super wealthy guy. Yeah. Super wealthy guy. So for him, that helps fuel that. Yeah. So for him, Money. he's not going to be motivated at all by consignment. He doesn't want to sell anything. 
But what he does like is guys like that are motivated by showing off and vanity. So if you're going to make an episode that gives him a really good video, really cool commentary, guys cracking jokes, cool people talking, and the shoe is the focal point of the conversation, like the history of the shoe, what this shoe means to him, right? Like now he wants to come on and give you this shoe, but also sneakerheads, dude, there's so many sneakerheads that are never going to see that shoe in their life. Like yeah. that, that shoe is like, like a crazy shoe to them, yeah. right? Yeah. So now you've created content where we've just kind of pieced this together where you have a value add to the collector where you approach them and you go, hey, one, we can kind of help you sell it if that's what you're looking for. But mostly you're going to get this polished video that you can show off on your social media and show to your friends because like that shoe's just sitting in a box right now at home. Maybe you can put a picture up, but this is like all of these people validating how cool you owning this shoe is. So then they're like, yeah, I mean, that it, you test that pitch, right? Yeah. So let's yeah. go back to the methodology, right? Okay. I've said these people would want you to make the content for them. So you test it by going, okay, I'm going to take that pitch that we came up with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call 20 shoe collectors and see how many of them would come on the show. And if you call 20 and five say yes, fuck yeah, you got a concept. If you call 20 and 15 say yes, you got a hit, right? Because yeah. now you've got your content sourcing problem and a unique angle. And I'm not talking about people bringing $50 shoes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go exotic with it and like that, that's your hardest thing is like the money that you would have to spend to acquire all these shoes. Now they're bringing it in for you. The next step is, okay, well, I've got the content solved and always start with the content. Mm -hmm. How the do product. I, get, how do yeah. I get people to pay me to do this? Okay. Because like I, I talked to so many comics. Can I just get on a fucking soapbox for a second? Is that okay? <laughs> like, do I have your permission? Okay. Yeah. The idea of the comedy club is so fucking dead to me. And like, like this isn't like bitterness. Like, I don't think the bookers are bad guys. I don't think I'm some undiscovered genius, but the model of like you grind in comedy, you kiss ass, you politic, maybe you get into like opener status and then you leave for New York or LA and then you're on TV. That model is dead. It's been dead for a minute. Gone. However, there's never been more opportunity in that. Like if that booker doesn't want to book you, you don't need that booker. Like, there's a kid locally. I'm going to shout him out. Ray Sands. You guys know Ray. Shinobi yeah. Ray on TikTok. Check out Shinobi Ray, okay? I, I want to say, and his numbers could be higher than this, but bro's got like 600,000 on TikTok and like 75, 80,000 on YouTube. And those numbers could be twice of what I just said because he's growing crazy. Yeah. And he's a comedian that also happens to be black that's doing commentary on anime. And when you add all three of those words together, now he's the only person doing that and there's a giant market for it. He's the only black comedian doing commentary on anime. Like maybe there's another one, but like he's in a super small category. Yeah. And super he, niche. I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to count other people's paper, but I will tell you that he makes more money and this is over, you know, he's, he's my boy. Like, I hope he knows it. Like, 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 you know, yeah, he makes more money than most of the comedians in the comedy scene. Right. It makes a good living off of it. Makes, makes, sure. could make a living off. Yeah. A lot of people would call that a live, a good living. Right. And he did it without waiting for the booker. He did it without, right. So is that stand up? No, but like, let me talk to the stand up comics for a second. Don't be kissing ass to get on bringer shows. Right. Be hustling to get 200 people. Like you should be volunteering to be a doorman for free at the comedy club, shaking everyone's hand in line and getting 10 people every night to follow you on social media. Cause those are 10 people that pay to go to a comedy show. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're not whatever headliner came into town, but those are people that go to comedy shows. And then the second thing, okay, these are now general principles. Actually, we got into it. <laughs> Don't be posting show flyers, man. Okay. Like if your social media is just show flyer, show flyer, show flyer, the algorithm is going to dump you on every platform. Yeah, Facebook, you gotta switch Instagram. It up. You got to put actual content up. It's like boxing. It needs to be jab, 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 one uppercut. You can't just come in throwing the uppercut, right? You got to yeah. set it up. So what you need to do, especially if you're a young comic, when you put a poster up and say, come to my show, you're saying, come to my show. Trust me. I'm funny. Please. I'm not. You don't know that I'm yeah. funny. You're yeah. not a household name. So what you need to be doing is fucking memes. What you need to, funny memes. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you make them. But if you don't make them, at least have the fucking work ethic to put to to source them, right? So I know this guy posts funny memes, even if it's from other accounts, right? But ideally, you write your own, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, let, let me I, ask you in comparison to, like, is it better to post a meme than a video of you doing stand up that's going well? Like, don't you post get a good stand up. Clip? Do not post I, your stand-up. Don't post and your stand-up. This is one of the things I brought up to you when we were talking about you coming out is I put up a video of me doing stand-up 
like 500 views, 600 views, tape Horrible off. idea. It's fucking terrible. Take it and, down. And it's a good take joke. It down. Take it down I, yesterday. I did. Yeah. And the same night, like literally late that night, like way off algorithm times or whatever, I posted a, a 10 second video of my dog just twirling around yep. with some un, some uh, somebody else's music on it. 1,900 views in the first hour. Yep. TikTok? Uh, that was just Instagram Reels. Yeah. 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 And, and Reels is, we could have a whole conversation about yeah. that too. Yeah. But here's I, why. What, what about and okay so I just I had another part to the question please so not your stand up right never post but your stand up I could do a, a dissertation on that memes versus uh, other content that's funny that's not stand up you know like other TikTok videos people do their skits videos whatever it is Wh- which is better memes or videos uh, discounting taking out the stand up aspect on the we'll get back to the stand up we want to come back to that but video is king right you have to know your platform. So a video that performs really well on TikTok is probably going to be in the 8 to 30 second range, right? A video that performs really well on Facebook is going to be in that like, uh, uh, I don't know. They change it so much, but it's much longer, you know, it, minutes, right? Instagram Reels going to cap out at 60 seconds, okay? Yeah. So each platform is going to be a little different. Also, each platform has its own uh, language. One of the things that does really, really well on Instagram and Facebook that doesn't perform at all on TikTok and you guys, as, as soon as you hear it, like you probably heard it, there's like this Indian song. It's like, yeah, and they just take a random clip from an action movie and then they put that song on it and then it goes viral. And and a lot of it is because, especially younger people, like it looks really cool because it's like the coolest clip of like the original Godzilla in like 2004. Yeah, and like oh, what movie is that? And so people are like looking to figure out what movie it is. They're commenting, and that engagement. <coughs> Boosts the algorithm, getting right? people yeah engaged. Okay. But that wouldn't work on TikTok because TikTok is about understanding what the content is. So like all of the TikTok content is searchable, and it, not all of it because some of it, most of the TikTok content that does really well finds its own niche. So there's like a strip talk on TikTok, there's a mom talk on TikTok. Like there's all these communities, and when you find a way of segmenting to that community, mm-hmm. that's when you become really successful. If it's just a random video, then you're competing against all other random videos. Well, how do you get into that from hashtags? Does that actually take you there? Hashtags also the people, right? So mm-hmm. if uh, uh, young males primarily are the only ones that are interacting with my video. And TikTok, it'll, it'll put you out to a, a, a experimental audience. So like 500 to 1,000 views. And it's a really broad range of people. And then based on who your video uh, interacted with, let's say it's primarily males. Let's use the action video, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if a bunch of males watched it and liked it and interacted with it, that next 5,000 views that TikTok... And also there's a minimum like threshold. So let's say the video did well but most of the people that interacted with were male. TikTok will make sure that most of the people that see it for the next 10,000 views are men. And then it further dives into age range from there and then tastes. So like TikTok's algorithm is so sophisticated, it can figure out it's an action video clip just based on who's responding to it. It doesn't actually need the hashtags. But when you feed it the proper amount of information, I recommend this, uh, anyone who's listening or checking this out, Facebook, uh, it's uh, Instagram Marketing Secrets and TikTok Marketing Secrets. It's a group run by my friend, Michael Sanchez. It's on uh, Facebook? They're both on Facebook. Uh, okay. They're free. He does have paid versions, but you know, for the first year, you definitely don't need his paid version. Um, I've gone through all of his stuff, through his courses. Uh, he's one of my StarCraft buddies. Um, he's the premier. He's the guy for TikTok. Like, he has clients that are like 20 million <laughs> 15 million followers and, and and he's built like all the playbooks for that. So if you want to like learn more specifically about how the algorithms work, I'm not the best suited to answer that, but Michael Sanchez, Instagram marketing secrets and TikTok marketing secrets are two different Facebook groups that he runs that are really, really good. And people are talking every day about how do I build better content? Uh, one of the local comics who's been killing it, uh, Mana. Uh, I, I, I think I invited her into that. I mean, I'm, I don't want to, I'm pretty sure I told her about it and then invited her into it. And at the time I think she was at like 15,000 maybe. And I want to say she's in like the 90,000 range now. And I know she's been an active member in that community. So, uh, I'm not going to take the credit for that. That's her, her, her hard work. Yeah, yeah. But she also put herself in a situation where she's around all these people making content that are giving tips and talking. That's how you do it. Don't hang out an extra hour at the open mic, right? It's killing me that uh, people will make this their everything, right? We're, we're like young people, a fictional person who's like 21. They put on Facebook by a working at comedian and they this is all they want to do and they don't make content. Yeah. 
And that's what I'm make, trying to get into gotta, now. Um, you're doing just it, so that, is you doing it. Like, like, we've been doing this for a year, but I want to put even more out there. Like you said, I, I've like I'm building my office to another place to record. Oh yeah, uh, getting guitar stuff together. I play a little bit. Not a pro by any means, but I have some ideas for just different content shit that I'm into, and I feel like. If I'm into it, it's going to come out a better product because I yeah. actually can't. I'm not just trying to do videos just uh, just to get the likes. Like I want to do stuff that I want to do. Yeah, and I think that makes it better. But, uh, but you do want to gain a broader audience. Yeah, too. yeah, I, I do want to throw a bigger net. You yeah, know? do you? Do you? I, right. I kind of want to like uh, from what he's saying is you open up more you doors do, for you do want to things to be more under scrutiny. I'm well, sure. Well, think, but. think, think no, not that. It's it's <laughs> what he's saying is, and it kind of is in line with something you're saying earlier that the old model of say comedians is dead, which used to be do clean comedy, get on TV, do the Tonight Show, and get a sitcom. Yeah. Well, that's dead because there were no avenues for uh, unclean or whatever you want to call it, call it crude humor, filthy, Dirty. whatever. Where now there is a lane for that and it's not like I don't want a sitcom that's not what I'm going for here I want to do stand up one day movies I want to be uh, play a villain like movies maybe TV shows more than anything yeah I want to play a villain so bad <laughs> uh, but I, I uh, that model is dead uh, Tim when I worked with Tim Dillon he he's one of the reasons I started podcasts because he yelled at me in the green room and he's like what are you, are you fucking stupid he's like that's what we do now as a comedian you build a, co- a podcast you build a following you don't have to go target anybody because because that automatically will the people that like it will be your targeted audience you build that up now you can sell tickets and now you can go to any venue of course they'll book you if you can sell the but place let's talk out. about that for a second just to interrupt you right let's say your goal is that you want to be a career comic right well, I could sit here right now and I could tell you a dozen ways to make a living off of comedy that are all loosely related but different. But like most comics, the purists, let's let's start from pure as possible and then move out. They want to do shows for audiences and get paid to do that, okay? You don't need a million followers. You don't need 100,000 followers on Instagram. You need 200 to 300 fans in 10 cities that you can drive to on a circuit. You need... Da- uh, 250 fans in Dallas that will actually come and watch you. You need yeah. 250 fans in Houston, San Antonio, Austin. And when you have like 3,000 fans, but they're spread out in those areas and you can pack a show out, you could actually low-key like make a living like yeah. like at that level, right? Where Absolutely. you're Where you're making a couple grand a weekend because you're booking your... Like you pay a couple hundred bucks. I'm not going to call them out, but like there's a comedy club right now where... And I'm sure there's more than one where you could get the room for free or you could pay a couple hundred bucks to get the room and you keep the ticket price and you can split the food and drinks, right? Yeah. So if you're bringing 250 people in and their average check per person is $40. That's making money. That's a good paycheck. Yeah. But that, and that's the thing is to build the following to get those fans. Now the way is not getting on TV. It's social media. You could do it door to door. You could, it, it pisses me off. That, in fact, you know what? Mike, I would like to do this with you as a video or, or, or if you don't want to do it, Consider we do, we have some door to door experience here. Yeah, I, over ten I, years. I would like to do. Uh, years. I've done this already. I've done little versions. So I've been out as a comic for like two months. I think I said this off air, but I'll say it again on air. So I don't want to just say this. I'm going to actually commit to. I'm going to send a message to myself right now that I'm going to commit to trying this. So, uh, uh, barking, right? Yeah, is I've the, done it, tons of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as content, where you're clipping the barking. And basically your crowd work. Those are your TikTok videos and your YouTube videos. But also you legitimately want those people that you're talking to to come to your fucking shows. Which I already do that. So you get them to follow your Instagram. After a show and people come up, I'm like, hey, pull out your phone. At Mikey Be The Comic, follow me. Free tickets, whatever. Uh, Make them pull up my page right there. Full on barking like that. Full on on barking, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And so if you did that, let's so so watch this, right? Uh, What's the next travel date you have in another city? Uh, October 8th through the 10th I'm in Oklahoma City beautiful right so watch we're doing it we're doing it live ladies and gentlemen live consulting so you're gonna have a bunch of downtime the day in between your first show and your second show right yeah okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a camera or GoPro or something on a little tripod and you're gonna go down to a busy downtown or mall area that's in Oklahoma City and you're gonna set a timer and in two hours you're gonna try to talk to as many people as possible get those people to follow you on Instagram as many wins as you can as possible okay and then you're looking to do crowd work each one of them you're doing crowd work hey can I do I'm a comedian can I do crowd work with you for two minutes and they say yes and then you're just gonna do it just like you were at a fucking show and you're gonna be riffing off the top you're gonna be practicing that muscle you do it for two hours you probably talk to like 40 50 people you get 30 followers okay 
that actually now follow you. Like that's you're a real person. They like remember. You went to a mall, a restaurant, yeah, yeah, yeah. anywhere, yeah. a busy and place, and yeah. they're a mile or two from the comedy club. So their physical body gets close to that comedy club. Okay, so not only might you end up selling an extra five or ten tickets for that show, but now you do that every time you're in Oklahoma City, and after a year or two of that, you've got your own five hundred followers in Oklahoma City. But also. You take the highlights of that. So if you'll look, remember how I said don't post your stand-up? Yeah. If you go look at my Facebook profile right now and my Instagram profile, which is in its infancy, I think I've posted three clips of me doing stand-up in the last week or two. None of it is my material. It's crowd work and it's funny things that happened. It's not a single fucking joke that I wrote. Nice. See, I, I just did a weekend at Comedy Arena and I actually... The video I got, I'm more excited to cut out the clips of that stuff because yes. I did a lot more like crowd That's work what and riffing. That's said it because I'm tired of just posting my jokes. I mean, I know they're good. They work in front of a crowd, but they're just not for social media. And it, that's helped me realize that, like, you that's the stuff I need to post. You cannot create content. At, okay. You cannot create. The barrier for stand up comedy is so. The, the, not the barrier. The, 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 the. Well, the vibe, Brady the bar, rubric, yeah. the bar yeah. is so high because we sit down and we watch Netflix and people will watch stand up just for a couple hours fucking around. That's some of the best comics in the world. And so I, people today consume more comedy than was even available to be consumed 20 years ago or 30 years yeah. ago. There literally wasn't a library of content. So when you put your stand up on Instagram, okay, no offense to anybody, but if you're listening to this and you're not like Dave Chappelle, when you put your stand up on uh, Instagram, you're cheapening it because people are dumb and they've watched the best in the world do it and they look at you and they go, not that hey. funny. Yeah. Not that funny. Not that yeah. funny. Okay. That makes sense. But that's I never your material. About it like and that. that's your material, right? Yeah. But when you're doing stuff off the cuff, impromptu crowd work, okay? Uh, Steve Hofstetter and he's yeah, yeah. I follow him he's he's famous for this and all we can have of, all a whole yeah. discussion about him out at Steve shows. destroys yeah. heckler and yeah. some of what Steve does is probably staged and I would love to talk to Steve about that sometime and no no <laughs> sense to him he's a hustler fight but, fight yeah he could he could bring it but uh, I don't want to ginger he'll fucking yeah take your soul I'm, he I'm, needs <laughs> one yeah I, and I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't, actually want to and I'm I want to finish what you're saying, yeah, but yeah, yeah. let's wrap this part up and move into the actual podcast. It's sure. a lot longer than make we content. For, let's, let's recap. Make content. Don't post your stand up. Build an audience. Understand what your goal is. What is my goal? Is my goal to make money? Okay. How are we going to build the business plan for the show? Is my goal to to be a comedian? Okay. How am I going to use the show to to facilitate people coming to my comedy shows? Right. Yeah. Make sure the goal build lines following. up with the business plan. But you're following needs to fit your purpose. If your yeah. purpose is to sell sponsorships, you need a big following. Get as many people as possible. If your purpose is to sell out shows, it doesn't need to be that big. And you can mix in locally targeted things. Like you can make a meme page that does just as jokes about, you know, TCU football. Yeah. And that's going to keep the people that share it and like it and interact with it local to the, are going to come here. New content of somebody that says something about it. That could turn out to be funny. It could be the funniest comic that comments on, you know, uh, SMU football. Yeah. Yeah. And now you've got, and those people are rich. And if they come to your shows, they're going to buy bottle service and shit and VIP tables. You just have a business plan that lines up with what you want to do in your career. Oh yeah, pretty yeah. good advice. Yeah, thanks, Fuck man. Thanks. Uh, Fuck yeah, that's great. We we definitely we spent like thirty five minutes on the advice part, and I told Jason I was like, oh, it'll be like 10, 15 minutes. No, but, I knew it wouldn't be. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, of course, because I'm a liar. No, it was really good content yeah. we brought in. No, but thank you, no, thank you for all uh, the advice. I'm my. I'm going to definitely have to rewatch the video to remember all of it. But uh, Just do the Barker yeah. thing. I think do the Barker thing in Oklahoma I think that's City. A, I think we should. Yeah, I think we should go out and make some videos like that, too, though. I would I be down. Be, I'm down I've been, for that. I've done it a little bit, but, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I haven't recorded it, so. And you, and you get a test. I'm... I'm